Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at a new Debian-based distribution. This is from the anonymous creator of Gecko Linux. So to refresh you on Gecko Linux, which I have talked about a few times in the past, this is a branch of OpenSUSE, which OpenSUSE can be a little bit difficult to use sometimes. So the creator of Gecko Linux created this desktop so that you could have OpenSUSE, but on installation, Everything's pretty much ready to go for the end user who doesn't want to tinker with proprietary, non-proprietary, installing things like file shares and stuff like that. So basically it's a way to get an OpenSUSE system that works pretty well. On Gecko, you can go through, you can grab whatever desktop you would like. There is a, uh, a developers type ish um, distro for um, brand, you know, like really advanced users who want to fully customize everything. But then otherwise you can pick your basic desktop. You can do your Cinnamon, your Gnome, XFCE, Mate, a variety of other ones. Well, the creator looked at Debian and said, you know, a lot of people are coming back to Debian, but Debian does have some elements that can be difficult to use in some circumstances. And so he said, well, let's go ahead and create a Debian build very similar to Gecko. And this is called Spiral Linux. So basically, Spiral Linux allows you to do the very same thing. The websites are very similar. The build's very similar because, hey, same guy. That's what we do. We reuse our functioning code. And so he created this, and you can download a version of it for whichever of the main desktops you want. Um, I picked Cinnamon in this case to do this test. There is all of the other ones, XFCE, Mate, Gnome. Uh, I think there's some window managers in there as well. So you have a few different options. So I went ahead and grabbed it and I did have a couple of little issues. The first time is I went ahead and spun this up. I'm overwriting one of my old machines and it worked perfectly, flawlessly, entered it in and did whatever. Um, but then I wanted to grab a little bit of information from the installer, so I booted it into another virtual machine, and I was having problems getting the installer to start. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe some bug with that particular uh, virtual machine settings and configuration. Uh, maybe I had something different. I don't know. Whatever the case was, it ended up not being uh, exactly uh, functioning as well, but I think I did get it resolved. I just basically had to wait. Who knows, maybe it's a hiccup in my internet that has been happening. I think I need to replace one of my um, ethernet cables. That could be the problem. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the installation. It uses the Calamaris installer, a very straightforward, simple installer. And uh, you do have the option to choose your different file systems between X, um, ext4, butterfs, f2fs, and xfs. Uh, I did not see zfs in there. Um, that would have been neat because that is becoming more popular as well. Uh, but you have a few options other than simply plain uh, ext4. You can encrypt the drive on installation. You have the option of swap with or without hibernation. You have no swap and you have a swap file option as well. And the automatic partitioner worked pretty well. There were no other strange options. Just go through, plow through it, <clears throat> boot up the system, and then it's working. Well, what do you get when you have that functioning? Well, I went ahead and had a look at uh, just looking around. The software is just the basic software. There's no excessive bloatware. We have LibreOffice. We have VLC. We have a few extra odds and ends tools in there that you might come to find useful on any Linux distribution. Uh, I had a look at the app sources just because if you are using Debian and you want to add the non-contributor, uh, the non-free, just a variety of other different repositories to break Debian out of the pure FOSS option and into uh, the wider community options, uh, those were all enabled by default. And that's really part of this because Debian without installing uh, some of the more proprietary or less free software options can be a little bit harder to use in some circumstances. And so uh, they went ahead and added those in as well. So you can go in there and do that. The software manager is utilizing the GNOME software store and flat, pa uh, flat packs are enabled with Flat Hub. 
The theming options, uh, Cinnamon outside of Linux Mint, Cinnamon generally is a pretty ugly desktop environment without theming it. We do have the ugly Cinnamon build. There's only one theme installed, and that is actually Numix installed as a flat pack. Uh, so I'm a little curious about that. It would be better to maybe have a few other options there and maybe some things that are not necessarily... I just don't see like themes and core elements as something that should be flat packs or snaps or app images. I don't know. Um, outside of maybe like the, the silver blue option in Fedora to keep everything isolated on a immutable operating system with <laughs> flat packs as your basic core. Um, but that being said, uh, you do have the option to go in there on the Cinnamon version, of course, grab other themes from the repositories. No big deal there. Uh, but FlatHub is already set up and configured, so Snaps is not set up and configured that I noticed. And um, you can get in there and basically uh, it works out well. I did go ahead and have a look, make sure network sharing works. So I booted up my network attached storage and then I accessed my anonymous file sharing on that system without any problems at all. Worked very quick, very snappy. So overall the system works. So what do I think? Have they successfully achieved building a distribution that is Debian that is ready to use? Absolutely. It doesn't have the polish and the finesse that some distros use, but I don't think that's what he's going for. He's just saying, let's get Debian and let's do all of these little back-end things that your typical user would have to do. What do those things include? Well, enabling the, uh, the non-free repos so that you can get your more proprietary graphics cards uh, or other hardware uh, configured out of the box without having to mess with it. So you don't have to mess with any of that. Of course, running this in a virtual machine, all the guest box, uh, uh, virtual box guest editions were installed. So it went full screen pretty nicely. Something I have had to fight with on my Linux Mint Debian edition uh, build for my virtual machine that I'm doing some experimenting on. I've had to do a lot of fixes to the Debian system even on that, which is incredible because Linux Mint Debian edition is very well well Debian ready for the end user. Uh, so that is something that has been fixed on it uh, for those interested in virtualization options. Overall, the system does work very well. Um, it Again, it lacks the polish and the finesse, but again, that's not what they're going for. They just want to make sure it's usable. So you can go ahead and uh, follow the links. I'll go ahead and link to where you can find Spiral Linux in the the description here so go ahead and have a look over there if you like Debian you're looking into Debian and you're you've heard it can be a little bit more challenging you might have a look at Spiral Linux you can choose the desktop environment of your choice from the various different options and then from there you can go ahead and uh, you can um, download the the operating system get it installed and then you can polish up the things like the the wallpapers and the the theming of the desktop environment yourself uh, but all of the other core underlying features should work perfectly well. So again, this is Spiral Linux brought to you by the same anonymous developer that brought to us Gecko Linux. With that, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll have a link to uh, Spiral Linux down below and have a look at it over on the uh, their website. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.